Hi there, how are you? Thank you so much as always for popping by. Well here I'm going to mirror a video by Dr. J.W. Morrison. Very unfortunate initials there, Dr. Morrison, who has the channel Pro One Theologist. He does many, many videos um, about how when we try to make God happy or stop him from being sad. How evil comes from that and how we just can't do it and all the damage that is done. He was very patient with me because at the beginning when he was saying that I was like, duh, ooh, because it takes me a long time, takes me a long time. But uh, he just keeps proving the case over and over and no matter what your beliefs, whether you describe yourself now as being atheist or Christian or whatever, I think these are really good points for to understand, to understand then how Watchtower has become such a damned cesspit of lies and cover-ups. I know those are hard words, but the lies and cover-ups, the paedophile's paradise. And that's not because everyone in there is horrible and cruel and wants to do evil. People go in with good intentions. I know I did. I went in with really good intentions. People are born into it. They can get baptised, sometimes through just through family pressure and social pressure, but often baptised from their heart. So people go in intending to do well, and people are in there with good hearts and wanting to do well and trying to do their best. But something is going so extremely wrong. Warning. So do Warning. Here's a view of the wonderful JW.org um, site, JW Broadcasting, where you can get their streaming videos, etc. You have here the children's section with lots of Caleb and Sophia videos. Very important because children do like characters to emulate and look up to. There are examples here where children can make God happy or stop him from being sad. You have in the middle there the title, Make Jehovah Happy. On the left, be good in the ministry. Sorry about the watermark covering everything. I shall sort that in the future. So when you're good in the ministry, you make Jehovah happy. You've got on the right there, love Jehovah's house. Uh, be humble in the middle. When, when you're humble, you make Jehovah happy. If you're arrogant and boastful, you can make him sad. You've got to appreciate the ransom. Um, Jehovah's name. Uh, keeping that high. Be appreciative. That's going to make Jehovah happy. Be generous. will make Jehovah happy. So you can see lots of examples that are given to children. So on the whole, have a look please at what Dr. Morrison is saying. And uh, do click on his own links and copy there because that's the most important thing. Thank you for your time. Bye for now. As soon as we think there's something we need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad, we're in trouble. Paul in Romans chapter 7 says, For when we were in the flesh, now I just want to ask you, do you know what that means? When we were in the flesh, it means when you were under the law. Now, the law was only given to Jewish people. It was not given to Gentile people. It was to be adhered to by the Israelis. So when they were under the law, the sinful passions which were allowed, roused by the law, see that? See, law, flesh and sin are intertwined. They cannot be separated. Where there's law, there's going to be sin. Where there's law, there's going to be flesh. Where there's law, there's going to be trouble. Because, for when we were in the flesh, now we here is the Israelis. It is not the populace of the church there. Because at the start he says, well, Do you not know, brethren, I speak to those who know the law. Who are the ones that knew the law? The Jews. So the we here in Romans 7 verse 5 is specifically speaking about the Jewish believers who are trying to transition from keeping the law to following Christ, which was very, very difficult and for some impossible. For when we, the Jewish believers, were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by what? By the law. Did you know that your sinful passions, viewer, 
are aroused by anything you think you need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad because that's what the law is. The law demanded that you did or did not do things to make God happy and stop him from being sad. That's what the law demanded. It was very simple. But whilst the law was good, it had very evil results because it aroused the sinful passions within the people that are trying to follow it. And it is still the same today. If you want to rise, if you want to rouse, if you want to bring into action your sinful passions, then just look at God's standards and pick which ones you want to try and keep because that will turn you evil. It will begin to arouse your sinful desires. And... Um, and they're aroused by the law, which are at work in our members to bear fruit to death. Now, I want to speak to the ex-Jehovah Witness community and the Jehovah Witnesses at large, because at the moment there's so many ex-Jehovah Witness videos coming out, I'm struggling to keep up with them, but they are so well presented and full of great content. But what I want to say to you all is, anything we think we need to do, or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad is what's causing the trouble in these cults regardless of their their prophecies that are wrong and everything I mean these people know the prophecies are wrong and stuff but they're they're bent towards evil they're bent towards lies because the sinful passions which deceive us are at work in them by the things that they're trying to do within their religion. I mean, it's so blatantly obvious. But now we have been delivered from the law. See, we're supposed to have been, and he's spoke, again, he's speaking to Jews, we've got nothing to do with the law. But we, they were supposed to have been delivered from the law, and nine out of ten Christian teachers or Jehovah Witness teachers are putting people back under the law. And where are they putting them? Back under the, into the sphere of arousing their sinful nature. And they're wondering why people are going to pieces, why there's evil. Because having died to what we were held by so that we should serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. See, so I keep saying it and 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 saying it. The problem with Christianity today, be it the Jehovah Witnesses or whatever else you want to say, um, what other ones are there? The Arnish, the Pentecostals, even the ones that, you know, apparently have got it all right. Anything you think, I mean anything you think you need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad is an undermining of the finished work of Christ because therefore my brethren 7 verse through 4 you also have become dead to the law how? through the body of Christ which means the finished work of Christ was all sufficient for time and eternity to have resolved all our issues between ourselves and God and until you come to that point where you say to yourself anything I think I need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad is actually going to do me harm. He's not impressed by it. He's not interested in it. It's actually going to do me severe spiritual and psychological harm, be it um, progressive or instant. Um, anything you think you need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad, any of those demands that you put on yourself are doing you harm. And until you can come to that place where you fall at the cross or the stake and say, I've had enough, I'm done, you will struggle and you will watch others struggle and it will be a cycle of harm, destruction, disappointment and death. See, the, the thing is, they're trying to put God first. They're trying to put Jehovah first. You can't. You can't. You're kidding yourself if you think you are. You put Jesus first and let the rest sort itself out. And when I say you put Jesus first, you go, right, what Jesus has done is enough for time and eternity. All my issues are resolved. There's nothing more I need to do. Thank you. 
It is done, it is finished, it is over, and get on with your life. Get out there and get on with your life. This is Dr. Jason W. Morrison, theologist, New South Wales, Australia. Bye for now. Yeah, Dr. Jason Morrison, theologist again. I just want to say thank you for watching the videos and I uh, hope you got plenty of uh, self-rediscovery and freedom out of it. If you watched it on YouTube, please share or like. Um, maybe even comment. If you watched it on Facebook, like, comment, share. Um, but most of all, get out and live. This isn't a rehearsal. You've got a one of life. Don't let your loyalty and your faithfulness blind you to the life that you should be experiencing. Till the next video, thank you for watching and bye for now.